Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be taking a look at a new stack from Acon. Now, this is a 20 by 20 stack with M3 sized holes and it is rated up to 6S. Now, theoretical 6S because it still uses baby MOSFETs like we saw on the Hobbywing G6, I think it was called. The one that basically burnt the FET. Now, I'm not saying this will happen the same here. But again, the bigger the FETs, the more current they could handle, and the better overall system would be on a 6S. Now, I will be testing this on a 6S setup, as well as 6S ESC testing, which will be upcoming very soon on the channel. But right now, we're just going to take a look at everything here and see what it comes with. Go over some of the specifications here and just check out everything we have on this board, from the ports to the ESC to the filtration, all those kinds of crazy good things. Now, as you can tell here, this is what they provide you. They provide you with two connectors because this will be connected to the ESC via connector here they give you these screws the nuts the rubber dampeners and they give you these plastic spacers which have a little um, it's gonna be kind of difficult to show you, as you can tell right there which they will fit into the hole of because uh, they're slightly bigger than an m3 on the ESC for these spacers and this whole stack takes 13 millimeters from these capacitors down here all the way up to the highest point on the flight controls. So this is 13 millimeters. So 13 millimeters of stack height is really good to have. That'll leave a lot of space for other things as well, especially if you're on like some sort of a low rider build here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start taking this apart so we can take a look at the flight controller as well as the ESC. And again, this is rated up to 6S, which is pretty crazy. Well, I mean, at least on the spec sheet, it's saying 6S. So we'll see how well that turns out. And if you are going to be running a 6S or a 5S, then you'd want to put the low ESR capacitor that's provided. And I'd actually recommend you put a slightly larger one than this one. That's just my opinion. Now, it does not come with an XT60, so keep that in mind. They do provide you, with, however, with the cables for the XT60, but you don't get a connector. So you're going to have to purchase that by yourself here. And they give you an extra rubber grommet and just uh, two extra spacers here. So let's go ahead and move these off the way. And uh, let me just quickly show you the spacers on what I meant here. Now, the holes are slightly larger. As you can tell from the screw here and you see that so this spacer here would come in with the uh, smaller part and it would actually hold into that and it'll keep everything nice and rigid so you will have to kind of use these spacers it would be a little bit better so you don't have a lot of play going on here so now the ESC is a Beale Heli 32 ESC and again it's rated up to a 6S and it does have ESC telemetry but not ESC telemetry in terms of current sensing. The ESC telemetry is going to be in voltage and RPM sensing because it just has one dedicated current shunt resistor right there for the current sensing and it does have a specific wire for the current sensing part. And uh, if we take a closer look at the manual here we can actually see what's really going on. We see we have telemetry all the way there. And again, telemetry would be for the RPM reading, voltage reading, and possibly temperature reading. Current is a dedicated port for current because we only have, again, one current sensor right there. And then ESCs one through four, battery voltage, and as well as ground. So there is no other five volt regulator or anything of that nature on this board that is accessible. Now, theoretically, it should have a 3.3 volt regulator, but those are for the uh, microcontroller units that are controlling each ESC. Now, the design here looks airbot design uh this is you know airbot likes the squared uh design here as you can tell with the pads and everything they do have two small holes here for you uh if you are able to actually fit the capacitor there through those holes that would be really nice yes that's the whole idea of it they're really close together i would have liked to see them more towards the edge here it would have been a little bit easier but um yeah you have that right there so you can just uh install that and if you don't know how to install the capacitor, what you do is you find the ground, which is right here, as you can tell the capacitor, and you put that to the ground, and then the other pin would go to the other side. Now, I highly also recommend uh, you add some heat shrink to these, so because if these touch, then you're screwed. This will blow up, and then well, you probably fry a couple things. If not possible, your battery could catch fire as well. So keep that in mind. Now, filtration looks pretty good. I'd like to see more since it's theoretically rated for a 6S. Now, what I'm really uh, looking to see is how well it performs against the Ori 32, even though the Ori 32 theoretically is not rated for a 6S on the spec sheet, but people have used it. And the Ori 32 is one is the best 20 by 20 stack I have tested. Now, it's, I'm not saying it's on the market, but out of all the 20 by 20 stacks, that thing is competing with the 30 by 30 top uh, a class uh, 30 by 30 stacks so that Ori 32 ESC is a good ESC and again this is I think Airbot design as well so I'm really curious to have those two head to head 4, 5 and a 6S here hopefully they don't burn because I do kind of thrash them on a 6S in the noise test so I think it'll give us a good representation or possibly burn it 
So, because my environment is a lot harsher than the real world environment when I do my ESC testing. Now, let's put this to the side. It looks good so far. I can't really say much, but it does have good filtration on board, as you can tell on both sides. And uh, they are far away from the hole, so you're not going to be risking popping out components anytime soon here. Now, let's take a look at the flight controller. So, the flight controller is, it has a lot going on for it here. So it's an F4 flight controller with an ICM gyro. So we also do have the OSD as you can tell it right there. And here's a small memory chip for black box logs if you needed that. And what else do we have here? Here we have our crystal. We have another crystal for this one. Tantalum capacitors. Um, it might be somewhat susceptible to noise since the capacitors on board are really, really tiny. Uh, but you know, it just it, it comes down to your motors and your overall setup. Uh, but yeah, and again, it's really recommended to add that low ESR capacitor. Now, in terms of pads, it's not really going short on pads. You do have quite a lot going on here. They are pretty tiny, so if you're new, it's going to be possibly a bit difficult for you to solder and even see. So you will need the instruction manual. Luckily, the instruction manual has everything you'll need, as you can tell right here. So if we set up the USB here and we take a closer look, this thing even has camera control. So let's put this into focus here. So we have the first four pads here for camera. We have uh, camera control, so you can control the camera's OSD, the video input plus and ground. So if you wanted to give five volts to your camera through the plus right here, then you would have to bridge these two together. And if you wanted battery voltage, you would bridge this one with this one right here. So yeah, that's how you'd set that up. And same thing for VTX. So this is really nice because they also take into consideration that you might be doing some kind of a micro build with this. And if you were, usually those tiny uh, all-in-one cameras or those tiny VTXs take five volts. So you would also bridge those two together right there if you wanted five volt for the VTX. And if you wanted battery, you would bridge those two together if you wanted the battery voltage for the VTX. And here we have video out, soft serial one, uh, so T1 I think here. We'll have to double check this, but this would be for smart audio if you were going to set that up right there. All right, so let's go ahead and just check here. So it, the layout looks really nice so far. So we have UART 4 here, very simple. UART 2 right here, very awesome. And here, this is where you would connect your receiver. This is where they'd want you to connect your receiver. So telemetry would be something like SBUS here. Uh, UART RX1, this is where you would put your signal for something, which I currently don't know what exactly, actually. Okay, so I finally figured out, you could actually connect everything, IBUS, uh, Spectrum, and SBUS to UART1 right here, which would be one, two, three, four, which would be that right there. You could connect it there because it's a serial UART, not normal UART, so that would fix itself out there. We have 3.3 volt regulated for Spectrum, 5 volt and ground for IBUS and FR Sky, and possibly something else as well. And here if we take a closer look at these rows, we have, like usual, LED, buzzer, ground, and uh, and 5 volt. So if you wanted to connect your, your your both a buzzer and an LED, what you would do is bring both of their 5 volts, connect them right here. You would ground the buzzer here. You would ground the LED here. And then you would set up your LED signal here. Now, the LED signal can do two things. You can even set up PPM if you're still using PPM, which is really nice uh, addition to have here. Now, if we take a closer look on the bottom side here, I'm very curious to see if we do have more pads on the bottom. We actually do. We'll check those out in a bit. We have a couple. We have two more, I think. Uh, yeah, we have motors five and six. If you wanted to build a hexcopter, you have two more signals like that. So that's really nice. And you could also remap them to something else. Now, if we take a closer look here, we also have soft serial two, which would be uh, for ESC telemetry here. So this is where they'd want you to set up the ESC telemetry. Analog digital converter for the current sensor. So, and again, like you said, you, like you saw, the current will not go in through the telemetry reading, but it'll go through a specific uh, wire for the telemetry. And that's where it would be on the second pin over. Uh, motors one through four. Battery voltage and ground. So this takes 6S battery voltage and can be powered directly off a of battery, which is really nice as well. So they've done quite a lot here in this little tiny board. It looks really good designed. It's very jam-packed here. And uh, that's all I can currently say until we actually... First, I think the most important thing is to test the ESC. Uh, I'll do the noise testing on the ESC. And then later on, we'll probably put these guys on a build and see how well they run. Now, for 90 bucks, depending on the ESC testing results, it'll tell you if it's actually worth it or not. Because you can save quite a lot of space and as well as have great performance in such a tiny stack. So that's going to be uh, a really interesting video. I'm very curious to see if it'll beat the Orange stack. Because uh, that's the top end of the 20 by 20 in my opinion, which I'll have linked down below as well. 
and this will also be linked down as well if you can check those out they'll greatly support the channel and that would be super awesome and well that's it guys i really hope you guys enjoyed it now and again this takes 13 millimeters of stack height so it's taking like a super tiny amount of space so just for reference 13 my digital one died so it's about that much i mean look at that i can't even fit my finger in there so that that's really nice it's really tiny uh so yeah well that's it guys i really hope you guys enjoyed the video i'll have a link to everything down below and i'll see you in the next one peace out guys